Uh, alhamdulillah, I was raised in a religious family. Uh, growing up, uh, I had no doubt about Islam um, my entire life. Uh, it, that wasn't even something that had come across my mind. But when I got older and you get into high school and college, you start hearing things and learning about things that you as a Muslim, you are certain growing up as uh, a person uh, who believes in Islam and in a Muslim family, you were certain about Islam, but without having studied previously and not being an expert in Islam, you come across these things and you hear certain things and you study certain things that you don't know how to respond to. And so obviously you, you mix maybe for the first time with atheists and you study evolution in school and you may even come across people who uh, are against Islam. And so they'll say things uh, that the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu was not a prophet. Uh, the Quran was written by a man that didn't come from God. And you as a Muslim, you yourself have certainty regarding your faith, but you're not a scholar, you haven't studied, you may, not, you may even not know Arabic. Um, and so you don't know how to respond to these things. And that's what happened to me when I was uh, beginning of my uh, college days um, as an undergrad. I came across these arguments and these um, doubts people make about Islam. And I, for myself, not being able to respond to them was not something I could accept. So, you know, some people say just ignore them and you have yaqeen and you have certainty. I'm not that kind of person in that I had certainty, but if there's something that I can't respond to or there's an argument I don't know how to refute, well, then it's going to eat at me. And so I would spend, when I started you know, being in a Muslim family, I never came across these even notions in the first place that who could even uh, claim that the Prophet Muhammad was not a prophet or the Quran was written by man or there's, there are errors in the Quran or whatever the case may be, all these different things. I, had, I didn't even know that people were saying this. But when you get older and you start mixing with... Um, certain uh, groups of people become aware of these uh, doubts and these um, stereotypes and so on. So for me, there, I, I could not live with not being able to uh, respond to these type of uh, doubts uh, with certainty, you know, certainly demolishing. I said certainty about my faith, but I, I, and I knew these doubts were wrong, but how to articulate that academically, I wasn't trained, I was a young kid. I hadn't studied. I didn't even know how to read or write Arabic um, to be able to go back to the sources. And so I would spend maybe 20 plus hours a day, maybe not even exaggerating, uh, on the computer trying to find answers uh, by previous scholars and, and uh, previous experts uh, responding to these doubts. And it was so much so that my, I know my parents, they feared for my eyes. I think I started wearing glasses and <laughs> my, they would hide the laptops and computers from me because enough is enough. You're, you're, you're harming yourself. But if there's anything, and the more you research, then you come across more things people have said. And so that, that, um, that path never ends. So then you start researching in response to this and in response to that. So people would say that, how do you prove that there's a creator? And how do you uh, prove that the Prophet Muhammad was a true prophet? And, you know, he took the Quran from this source and, you know, he copied this source and there are uh, grammatical errors in the Quran in Arabic and, and it goes on and on and on. And the more you, try, you start trying to respond to one doubt, another one, you know, uh, pops up and you then start researching how to respond to this. And then I finally realized that the only way to be able to respond to these is by seeking sacred knowledge seeking Islamic knowledge. And that's what I started to do. So I devoted my life from then on to seeking knowledge. And I even remember when I was in high school, my uh, teachers uh, told me that uh, you'd be a, a good lawyer. So they tried to encourage me in high school to go to law school. And I even remember in high school, one of our um, government classes, we had to write a, a paper that uh, one would write if they were in law school, similar uh, prompt and similar uh, style. And I remember I got an A on the paper and the teacher had written on the paper, you know, worthy of an A at Berkeley Law School. Back then it was called Bolt Law, and they changed the name recently. They said, worthy of an A at Bolt Law. So I they were encouraging me to um, go to law school. And, but then I had this, you know, uh, feeling that if I'm gonna spend three years at a law school studying man-made studying man laws, then the laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are more deserving of being studied. So I decided to seek knowledge um, and through knowledge, I was able to respond to all of these doubts that I had come across. 
you know, once you s study the sacred sciences, anyone who says there's an error in the Quran, anyone who says there are contradictions in the Quran, the Hadith, anyone who says that you cannot prove rationally um, that there's uh, an eternal creator, anyone who tries to bring about any doubt, if you're not trained properly, these things will eat at you. And they may, and they may cause you even to have doubts about the faith. But, you know, I guarantee you, uh, and I, because I wouldn't let it go, and I realize this, that Alhamdulillah, I didn't let it go because um, who knows if you let the, you know, the doubts uh, continue to uh, stay in your mind and and uh, eat at you. Eventually, it may actually reach your heart and become it moves from just being a rational thing that you know that pops in your mind to actually now affecting your iman. And so I didn't want that to happen. Uh, so I wanted to make sure that I could respond to every single thing that I came across, and I decided to seek knowledge. And if you study, yeah, it's very easily uh, you'll be able to respond to every single doubt from a theological perspective. Um, from a historical perspective, from a legal perspective, from hadith sciences, uh, you know, perspective, and alhamdulillah, that was. And once you start studying, then you know that there's nothing anyone has ever thrown at Islam that can't be easily responded to. So, I think that's when um, when I realized alhamdulillah that there's nothing anyone could say that could ever, you know, make a doubt. Uh, and this is from the fadl of Allah subhanahu wa taala. If you're benefiting from this content, then please make sure to click subscribe and make sure that you turn on your notifications.